Hi everyone, good morning. This is Sarita from Hasha Trainings and welcome back to our PEGA interview sessions. Today our topic is on integrations. So we are going to do integrations like three multiple videos. So please keep watch every video and subscribe to our Hasha Training channel. We move on to next question. Okay. What are different methods available in REST architecture? Okay, just now as I have told you, like you want me to explain in detail, like we have different methods in REST architecture like get, post, put, delete, patch and get method we are going to use whenever we are going to uh, just consume the service just for the response. So whenever I, I am creating a service, just the service receives a request and sends a response back. No impact at the service and on any database tables or something. In such cases, we will go for get. Suppose uh, there is another one called post. Suppose when a request is being received, if we wanted to insert a record in our database, uh, then we will go for post. And we go for put when in case if a record has to be created or updated, fully updated in our end, we will go for put. And there is one more method called patch. So whenever we are updating any instance partially, one record has to be partially updated from our end, then we will go for using patch method and implement the logic there. And last one, delete. If you are trying to delete a record from our system whenever a request is received, then we go for the method delete. What is the importance of service package in services? Okay. So whenever we are working with web services, that may be similar type of service or different types of services. For the service, in order to execute its, its service activity, taking it from a specific role set, it has to know from which application context it has to uh, access that activity. So the application context will be supplied by the access group. So we are going to connect or map a service rule, any web service rule with a service package. Service package is going to have this particular access group. Means in the other words, service package is like a supplier of access group to the services. Now when service is getting executed, it runs all its roles on the access group that is being specified in the service package. This is one aspect. Other than this, a service package also defines stateful or stateless mode of processing on which the services should be running. This is the second aspect. And the third one is service package is the one which is responsible for generating WSDL URL or endpoint URL in case of uh, web services accordingly. What is the difference between SOAP and REST services? Uh, the difference, uh, the high level main differences between SOAP and REST are SOAP can support only XML data structure whereas REST can support XML, JSON, text and HTML. There are different data structures that it supports. And the next point like uh, SOAP can, uh, SOAP is not being classified as methods specifically. Uh, and REST is being classified as methods like as I told you like get, post, put, uh, delete and patch methods. This classification is not there in SOAP but still SOAP also can implement all of this. But by the architecture itself the classification is not available and usually in the uh, high uh, like high number of uh, heavy number of transactions while it is processing it has been found that rest is faster and lightweight than soap and these are the main high level differences well when we come to pega specifically one more difference is there that is while working with soap we need to create xml stream and parse xml rules by ourselves for the streaming and parsing and but in rest we don't need to do this because prpc internal internally has Java APIs like get JSON object and adopt, adopt JSON object which are responsible for converting from clipboard to JSON JSON to clipboard. So that is another difference with respect to PEGA. These are the main differences. Okay. How to do the exception handling in connectors? Yes. Uh, exception handling in connectors can be done in many different places. Like we can do exception handling in activity. We can do exception handling in data page. We can do exception handling directly in the connector rule also. Coming to the connector rule, for every connector rule like SOAP connector and all, we have a connection problem flow is being called within that. So whenever uh, there is any exception, automatically PRPC invokes connection problem flow of the connector where it is going to verify if the server is completely down like 404 or anything else. If it is 404, there will be an assignment that gets created in the connection problem flow to hold this particular request in a uh, basket called uh, uh, connection, wait connection, some basket is there. And uh, uh, for that, it has one uh, uh, specific SLA, okay, that SLA is going to just verify to hit the service and then again, again, within a goal, deadline and pass it at any times. And like this, exception handling can be done where the connector when 
the uh, when there is an exception without any manual interaction next to three to four times it can retry automatically as per the goal deadline and pass deadline times we give in the uh, connection problem flow related sla and this is one way and the other way while calling from the activities as we all know like uh, at the time of calling the connector by using connect method we can verify the step status fail at all and accordingly we can jump to a labeled step and we can write the message into the log files by using log messages and we can go ahead and display a harness by calling show harness and put this particular assignment uh, uh, the transaction or the execution into some specific work basket separately uh, waiting and the third method is like uh, we can do exception handling in data page also in the data page we have an option called error processing at the time of response data transfer while calling below there is an option for error processing and there we can call OOTB exception handling data transforms like uh, uh, PX error handling templates and all and there also we can log the messages to we will verify whether there is any uh, primary page data page has any error messages or not if that is there we can log the messages and we can display some messages to the user saying that problem is uh, there is a problem processing the request and we can display a phone number to call the customer care to raise the ticket like this multiple ways we can do exception handling while consuming any services and in, in with respect to connector rules from our prbc and thanks for watching this video please subscribe to our hasha training channel if you have any questions or doubts related to interviews or if you face any typical questions and in interviews please post it in comment box we'll reach out to you thank you